morning, church. Good to be with you all again today. Just as our worship time was taking place, I'm thinking you know, it is such such a good thing to be part of a very multi generational church, and um, you know to have our, our young people up leading up the front. It's 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 pretty good to see, um, and especially acknowledging that they're using their talents to honour God in, in the ways that they are. To start today, I've just got a, a little quiz. Um, see if you can guess what I'm, what I'm um, questioning about. Uh, what's something that we've all got, um, and for a lot we wish we could change it? I'm not talking about your nose. I'm not talking about your hairdo or whatever hair you ended up with. Um, you know, we might wish that we had someone else's this thing that belonged to someone else, but we're stuck with the one we got. Um, some just want to bury theirs and leave it out of sight. Others want to flaunt it. Um, you know, when we look at others, we might think, oh, you know, they've got a really colourful one, but mine seems so dull. What do you think it might be? I'll, I'll give you, a, a, I'll give you a, um, a hint. If you had a look at your bulletin, um, you'll, you'll find it somewhere there on the front page. <clears throat> oh, yeah, somebody said history. That's right. You know, none of us can escape it. We're all a part of its making. And how do we become involved in it? Well, it's quite simple. All you had to do was be born. You had to live. And that's all it took for you to be an essential part of the history-making process. That's all it took. All down through the ages, people have lived and died but during their time on earth, they helped shape the lives of others and contributed to making this world what it is today, even if it was in such a, a small, small way. And today we'll be sharing of how even you, how your story already can make up history, already has made up history. But before we go on, I just ask if we just bow our heads and, and we just offer a word of prayer for, for myself. Dear Father, I just thank you that we can be found in your presence again here today. Thank you for the Sabbath. Thank you for the day of rest that you know we need. And Lord, at this time, I just pray that you'd please close us in with you. And Lord, uh, may you be seen today and not me. And may your, heard, your words be heard and not mine. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, history can be very interesting, it can be very fascinating, but not all people will agree with that fact. Uh, and, you know, I guess, in all honesty, it, you know, if you're sitting in a, in a history class that you'd rather not be in, history can be very dry, can be very bland, but I'm sure that at times, it can be a source of some very juicy information. Is anyone aware of the Greek word for history? What it is? Um, it's not too far off the word history, actually. It is historia. And historia refers to inquiry, or a knowledge acquired by investigation. And, you know, just in preparation, I, I had a look of, at the Oxford English Dictionary meeting, um, one of my favourite books, the dictionary, and in there it says, 
well, I, I picked out the three most relevant that I thought was for today. And it's, it says there that it's the study of past events. Another was the past considered as a whole. And another is the past events connected with someone or something. Um, you know, I know it's true that a lot of people love finding about, finding out about, you know, all they can about people and events of the past. And finding out things from history can help make sense of things in our present day. Or it can do the total opposite. It can turn our present totally upside down. And there are people who try as we said in the quiz, who try to hide historical facts because of what, reve of what it reveals. And yet others are just as, tr just as keenly trying to uncover it. Um, has anyone here ever tried finding out about their family history? Yeah? Yeah, a few. Um, I was in conversation with some folks, you know, just a few days ago about this topic, and I've had this, this theme swimming around in my head for a few months, so I thought, you know, I'd, I'd share a bit on it today. But I guess we could say that many of our ancestors never dreamed that one day their distant progeny would be in search of facts about themselves and about their lives. And searches back into history can be done out of curiosity, which I guess is the most part, the most part for us, or sometimes it can be done out of necessity. Um, have you ever heard of anybody wanting to lay claim on a fortune, and all they had to do was prove that they were somehow connected to a deceased person? or that they come through a, f a certain family line. Have you ever heard of somebody doing that? I, I, I have. And, um, and you know, to those who at one time thought history was quite a dull, dull subject, it can quickly become very interesting when there are you know, certain things inciting us to find out where we come from. And um, the lure of free money incites people to do all kinds of things they thought they may not have, you know, wished to do. Now I want to ask, what would you do if you found out accidentally that you come from royalty? Or that you came from a, a chiefly clan? Or from some rich or famous person? Yeah, that'd be pretty good, you reckon? I think so especially if you end up getting a cut of the family's fortune. And another thing that can make hunting down you know, more of our history so interesting is the fact that we ourselves may like to think that we were like our, our ancestors. Um, if we find out that they were brave, that they were honest, that they were adventurous, that they were strong people, then we may take pride in the fact that, you know, we came from such a line of people. And we hope that today people will see, you know, that kind of character in us as well. And we hope that, you know, people may actually say things like, oh, you know, she's just as brave-hearted or just as kind and generous as her great-great-grandmother. Or, or something like, you know, he's just as much a true leader type kind of a person as his great great grandfather. But what do we do? What can we do if we find that our forebears were greedy or that they were mean and nasty people or even drunkards or even the town nuisance? Um, you know, what, if, what, what can we do if we find out that we come from a bunch of criminals somewhere back then? You know, I've known people that have actually found this out to be true, and they just sort of shrug and they have a little bit of a giggle um, to find out that great-great-uncle George or whoever it was 
did things, did certain things that ended up getting him, you know, thrown onto a convict ship and sent to Australia uh, because he, in the, he was in the habit of jumping into people's windows and pinching stuff. Uh, but what can you do, really? What can you do? And, and you know what, I think that most people just hope that they haven't been too affected by those people in the past or that, that they don't carry any of the influence from these people. But even if what we find out about our own piece of family history makes us blush or makes us proud, I think we today need to consider one question. And that is, okay, so what kind of a history am I currently writing into my own life record? Or another way to ask the same question is, what will my life story reveal about me to those that will look back at my exploits, my character, my lifestyle? Oh, sorry, I've got, a, I've got a picture here that I am. Um, Because you see, none of us live our life off the radar. And as I stand here today, I know what kind of things I would like said about me in the future years. But this is where I come across a problem. I know what I have done in the past. And some of those things have been really bad. And I know that in my history, there are things that I wish I had never done. Because those things hurt others, they've hurt myself, and I know that I've brought discredit to God. But you know, in sincere and genuine praise to God, there is a particular history that came through to deliver me and you. And apart from all the bad we know we have done, we have the great and amazing opportunity and privilege to have some really neat stuff written into our history. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. And there's only one way to be able to do that. Do you think that history was important to people in Bible times? Do you think it was? Yeah, I think most of us would agree. It surely was. Knowing who and what you were connected to was of great importance. And there are abbreviated family trees in the form of genealogies that were recorded through many generations, and a classic example of one is found in the Bible in Matthew chapter 1, where the succeeding generations are divided and recorded into three lots of 14 successions. So 14 generations were recorded, then the preceding 14, and then the preceding 14 again. And I don't think anyone alive today would be able to trace their family back that far. I know I certainly wouldn't be able with mine. But as we read the Bible and other ge genealogies, it becomes obvious that God keeps a tab on who's who as well. And we read sometimes commendations and sometimes we read warnings given to either a single biblical historical figure or to a whole host of people groups. God kept tabs on every single one of them. He knew their lives and what kind of story they were writing in the pages of history because God is always taking the whole picture of history into account. He knows each leaf of on the family tree. Each of these people left their own unique footprint in history. 
But as we read, you know, Bible records, I came across this verse that I think, you know, it's probably one of the most undesirable records you would rather not find or you would rather not read written about your own folks from your own family tree. And it's found in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 4. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 4. Talking about those in, in a, on the family tree. And there it reads, Do not be like your ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed, saying, This is what the Lord Almighty says. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay any attention to me, declares the Lord. Now, you know what, if these were my folks that this, this verse was talking about, and, and you know, I'm, I'm a distant family member to these people mentioned here, um, I'd probably read that and start thinking, well, you know what, I wonder what they were really up to. And if I think, if I, you know, lived a bit closer to that time that this was written, I'd be asking my parents some serious questions. <laughs> and one of them would be, um, Mum, did you actually say that we related to them? Now let's take a brief look at some, you know, other individual characters in the Bible to see what kind of footprint that they made in history. The very first couple we're going to look at is Adam and Eve, also known as our first parents. Um, what kind of footprint did they leave? Well, they caused the fall. Um, so we'd probably say that wasn't probably the best footprint to leave. And then we could look at, a few years ahead of time, we could look at Noah. Uh, I see him as someone who was very faithful. He built the ark to God's specifications to save mankind. So that's a good footprint. You'd probably agree. And then jump many years ahead and we can look at Saul who converted to Paul. Well, he was an assassinator of Christians, but he changed to become an ambassador for Christ. So I think he's ended up as a really good footprint. Jump back a few years and we can look at Mary, the mother of Jesus. What kind of a footprint do you think she left? I'd say a good one. Uh, a few years back from Mary, Enoch, he never tasted death because of a life totally focused on Christ. He's probably left a great footprint. Moses, well, he started off as a know-all prince, and yet he became one of the greatest leaders of time when God humbled him. And he left a really good footprint. Now, if we hashtag bad girl, we'd probably come up with the name Jezebel. And her name says it all. Hashtagging bad boy, could lead you directly to the story of King Manasseh uh, before his conversion, but then he became a committed follower and leader for God. And there in the Bible laid bare for us to see are the lives of these characters and many more. These people are long gone, but their recorded story remains. History is a really good teacher, and we can learn many things from the stories of these characters. But I ask today, you know, what is the purpose of history? What is the crux of it? What's in it for us here now today? Because you see, it really doesn't matter in this grand scale of things who your ancestors were. Because there's very little that they can do for you today. All the people that ever came 
through history are as dependent on history as the rest of us are today. We are all totally dependent on his story. You might be thinking what you're talking about. How can we be totally dependent on his story? It's long gone and I'm still here. But it's not the what of history that I'm talking about, but it's the who in his story that matters the most to us. It's the story of Jesus Christ that is the real his story maker. None other figure in history can offer forgiveness of sin. None other can offer salvation, hope, or everlasting life. The story of Jesus tells me that he saw the predicament that we as earthlings were in because of the fall, and he selflessly volunteered to come and rescue us because we'd all be goners if he didn't come. His story saved us, and that's the best kind of history that was ever recorded. His story is really the only kind of history that is worth spending years searching out, inquiring, and investigating into. Jesus came to make his story applicable to us, and we are now, even today, a part of his history making. Do you want proof? Well, there's a whole book written about how we are connected to Christ. It's called the Bible. And if we pick it up and we read it, we will see just how much we are a part of him and who we really are. He knew about us and he handpicked us even before we were born. And we can read about that in Ephesians chapter 1, 4 and 5. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He loved, in love he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. So you are a part of God's pleasure and God's will. We came right from him at the beginning of this earth. We were made in his image. It's like we've got his DNA running all through us. So we're his family. And we read about that in Genesis chapter 127. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And when I look out on you guys today, I see male and I see female, I see mankind. So, it, you know, it's just a reminder to myself that, you know, you were created, you came from God. Now, our name is listed on the family tree. BTW, the name of our family tree is Calvary. Our lives are imprinted on his hands. That got done when he was putting our family tree together. Hebrews 2, 10 and 11 reminds us of this. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation, that's Jesus, perfect through what he suffered. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same what? Of the same family. We're family. So Jesus is not ashamed to call them brother and sister. Brothers and sisters, sorry. He died for us a long ways back and we are a part of his story. God knows your history. He knows my history. He knows where we come from. And he knows what we are like in our innermost being. And yet even with this knowledge, he accepts us 
into his own story of salvation. And that's something I thank him for every day. Uh, just, a, just a few, or oh, quite a few weeks back, um, I went to the war memorial um, with, with some of the students from Henderson College. And, you know, the war memorial in, in Canberra. And for me, it, it, you know, it's such a spectacular place to visit. It, it was obvious that so much work went into putting that place together. And I found it very informative. The whole ex exhibition was very well put together and I learned a lot more about the wars that Australia was involved in. It was a spectacle to see a little piece of human history, to learn what can happen when some powers that be push their agenda, which results in the destruction of others, without regard to the others who are wanting to live peaceful lives. And I was so sad to be reminded of what happened to those people who lived during those times. There were so many reminders of death. And it illuminated a very dark piece of our history. And as I'm walking around thinking about this, I thought, you know, this history stands, in dark, stands as a stark contrast of the life that Christ meant for us to live. But his story makes our future story vibrant and living. As noted before, we have a part to play in his story as well. So what is it? Philippians 2.12 Philippians 2.12 reads, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You know, that spells it out pretty clear. We must be working out our own salvation while there is breath in us. You know, we may have come from a stock of God-fearing people, but even if they were God-fearing people, this verse tells me that their deeds cannot save us. There's no way that we can go piggybacking into heaven on great-great-grandfather Joe's merits. You are the one that forges the outcome of your life. And in the grand scale of time, our own history-making stint doesn't amount to much in time. We are here for a seemingly brief period in time, then we are gone to where all men eventually go. But thank God that does not have to be the end of our story. It can be just a brief pause, a comma in a sentence that is written on the pages of everlasting life. And herein lies the hope of all the ages. Christ is about life eternal. He is about saving and not destroying us. I can say with all certainty that my own sins, your own sins, our own sins will condemn us. But Christ can rescue us from that condemnation because he came to make his story. And so Christ says, Isaiah 1.18, come now, Connie. He says to me, come now, Connie, let us reason together. 
or in the NIV it says, let us settle the matter. Though your history, your past, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And you know, I'm, I'm really glad for that verse right there. I was reading about these two colours in a, in a website, scarlet and crimson, and it said that historically, the makeup of these colours, what they were used, uh, what they used as dyes, to form these two colours and dyeing a cloth that they were the firmest of dyes and not easily removed from cloth. And you know, it makes sense to me when I read it in this light because my sin is so ingrained and so difficult for me to remove. But here Christ is inviting me to come and sort it out with him, to settle the matter with him. Well, I guess he does the settling because the next thing I know, if I've come to him and settle it with him, that I'm walking away clean. And that's an offer too good to refuse, I reckon. You know, there's been some really colourful characters in history, and I'm not just talking about their skin colour. We can read the accounts of what these people have done, and it makes for some very interesting reading. And for those who have lived respectful respectable and honourable lives. I like to think that they lived in such a way with their family or those that come after them in mind. They want to live respectable, they want to live honourable as an example to those that come after them. And we today have been given a lot to share to others as well. We have been offered the gift of salvation and the hope of eternal life where sin and its effects will never exist ever again. So again I ask, how are we writing our own history? What are we doing for those around us and those part of us? What are we doing with his story? I just want to relate a story. It's a, you know, it's a sort of a recommendation of what we can be doing with his story. And it's, it's about, you know, back in more recent rail railroading rail history, there was a man posted at a crossing. And his job was to wave a red flag to warn automobiles that there was a train coming, or drivers that there was a train coming, so they'd stop at the tracks and wait for it before they try to pass. And in the night, he would wave around a red lantern when, when the need arose. He was a very faithful man and was always at his post of duty. One night, however, there was an accident. A car had started to cross the tracks because it was apparently safe to do so. And an oncoming train crashed right into the back end of it. And fortunately, there were no, you know, no fatalities. And after the, the driver recovered from his shock, he sued the railway company for damages. Because, as he stated, he hadn't been warned of the approaching train. So in court, the flagman was called into the witness box and asked, were you there on the night of the accident? Yes, sir, he answered. Did you see the man coming in his vehicle? Yes, sir, he answered again. Did you wave your lantern? Yes, sir. And so the case was dismissed, owing to the flagman's response. As they left the courtroom, one of the railway officials thanked the flagman for his testimony. Because of your response, we are saved from having to pay so, so much money in damages. Thank you. And this is what the flagman said in return. Well, yes, well, thank you, but you cannot imagine how scared I was all the time for fear that the judge would ask the question, was your lantern lit? 
Now, the writer of the story doesn't know what happened you know, after that, but the lesson is there for us. We have been handed a precious light that has come down to us clear through history. It is his story of our salvation, bought at such a great cost. We are to shine this light of his story through the darkness, the darkness that has pervaded our earth. We are to not hide his story. We are not to let the light go out. We, through hindsight today, know what has happened when that light was not lifted high for all to see. People through history gave their life in martyrdom in an effort to keep the light of the gospel shining so that it would not be extinguished. May we not, like the flagman, swing around an unlit lantern that keeps people in darkness. Today we have an essential part to play in his story his story, and may each one of us take up our post of duty faithfully and proclaim his story, the story of Jesus saving grace. Amen. Please just bow our heads in, in prayer. Our dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for this time that we can spend. It's almost like a minute part of our week, Lord, in just talking about you and thinking about you and reading from your holy word. We thank you for all that we have come to know about you, Lord. We thank you for what we are able to learn, not only through history, but most importantly through the story of Jesus. And again today, Lord, I just ask that you would help remind us that we too, Lord, are part of this history-making process and Lord, um, you are coming soon. Father, we do have a, a short amount of time here for ourselves on earth. And Lord, while we are here, while we are alive and while we have breath left in us, help us to be faithful to, to our calling. Help us to every day to hold up the red flag, to hold up the, the lantern, Lord, the lit lantern through the light, uh, through the darkness, Lord. And and just help us to, to be a light to others that need so much to hear about you. I pray for a blessing upon each of the people here today. I ask for a blessing upon their families, their households as well, Lord. And may again today we just continue to look to you and to continue to share you with others around. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.